Hi there folks, what's going on? It's Mike here and welcome back to our C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about functions, as you can see in this image here. And functions are a way for us to repeat work. Or mathematically, you can think of them as given a input or multiple inputs, you get a single output from that function. And this, again, allows us to sort of break up our work into smaller pieces. So C++, like any other programming language, has functions. And let's go ahead and take a look at how they work. So above me here, I've got the CPP reference page on functions. If you want to know how they work or you know, just get a different perspective from what I'm going to present here. But let's go ahead and work from the diagram that I have here. And the first thing that we want to know about a function is that it has a name. This is how we're going to refer or call that actual function and use it in our program. So the next part of a function is the actual parameters that we have. And we can have multiple parameters or no parameters at all. So this is parameter one and parameter two. And the things that we supply or will substitute in for the values of a and b, those are the arguments of our functions. It's a little bit of a technicality, but uh, that's okay. You don't have to worry about that. But just know that we can have as many parameters as we'd like. A general rule of thumb you'll learn is having no more than five parameters is usually good. Once this list gets too long, well, then it's hard to keep track of. And the last part of this function here at the top is the return value type. And that is what type of value are we going to return? Is it an integer? Is it a Boolean? Is it a string? Is it some other custom data type? We have to specify in C++ what exactly we're going to be returning. So in our actual function here, and this is the function body, which I'll just write here, the body of our function. This is where we do our actual implementation. So what happens between the curly braces here is our function body or where we're doing the work. Now, this function is pretty simple. It's just an add function. And we are returning just the sum of, well, the two parameters, whatever arguments are provided there, a plus b. So overall, this is a pretty manageable uh, function that we have here. And functions, of course, can span or be as large as we'd like. Again, some rule of thumbs are usually you keep them the smaller the better and try to break things into smaller functions. So the last thing I want to say about this sort of anatomy here is that the full function signature consists of the return value, the name of the function, and its parameters. And I'm just going to label this as the function signature. And this allows us to know if we're doing something different. For example, this function it very specifically adds two integers. But we could also have another function that adds two floating point numbers, or two doubles, or any of the other data types. And that would be considered a different function in C++. And we're allowed to do that. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at writing this function in C++. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the caveats that we have here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I have uh, set up a main file here, just like this. Looks like our skeleton program that we've been using previously. And I'll go ahead and write our function. And let's go ahead and just add 1 and 2. And the return value will just be, um, or rather, let me specify the parameters before I get ahead of myself. The return value is just a plus b here. And if we actually want to call this function, let's just go ahead and do add, and then 1 and 2 here. And these are the arguments. Arguments are 1 and 2, a equals 1, b equals 2. So that value here, a, we are essentially placing 1 inside of it. And the scope of int a here is just this body of the function. Remember, we talked about scope before. Uh, and this follows our scoping rule. It's just the same. Between these curly braces, this is where the value a will exist. So if we call this function multiple times, that's OK. And the same applies for b. Now, in order to make this sort of a useful example, let's go ahead and just do a C out. So from the C out object, we can print out what the output is here. And we'll just do something like this. And let's just go ahead and compile this. Again, nothing specific about C++ 17, but I want you to get in the habit of using the modern language. And we'll run this and see the value is 3. So that seems to work here. Very good. Now, a few things I want to talk about with functions is also regarding this uh, function 
uh, signature that we have here. Sometimes this is also known as the declaration, and then we have the definition or how the actual function acts. And this is important because C++ needs to know whenever it sees this add one, two, what exactly is going on? What value are we returning and how many arguments do we have in here? So for instance, let's go ahead and just make a little mistake here and remove one of the arguments. Let's assume we only supply one here and we're going to see this error here. Too few arguments to function int and it's supplying the function signature here that it returns an integer and takes in two integers here. You won't see the names of the actual uh, parameters being supplied a and b, uh, but that's okay. You can sort of understand that this is the same function here. So let me go ahead and undo that. And the other thing that we have to know about C++ is it has to know about this function before we use it. So for example, I can define and declare this function below our code and let's see what happens here. So I'll recompile because I've made some changes and I've saved my source code. I'll hit enter and it says, add was not declared in this scope. So basically C++ is saying, if I'm reading this program top to bottom, I can't find this function. So there is a way to solve this. If we want our main function to be the top of our program, for instance, then what we would do is we would go ahead and just provide the function declaration or the signature that says, hey, this function exists. So you could write add int int and put a semicolon here and recompile it. And then C++ sort of calms down. It sort of in a way says, okay, I believe that you have this function here. This is the function declaration. And we have what we say forward declared this function declaration as sort of a promise to the compiler that says, hey, this exists. We'll give you or tell you how the work's being done later in our code, somewhere else in our program. So that's just a sort of important idea to have. And you just need the function signature in order to do this. And you can supply the parameters I usually do, just so it's uh, clear and it matches what we have here at line 16 as well. So let me go ahead and just recompile this to show it works. And again, we'll see it works. Now, functions can return at most one value. So you can see that we're just returning one integer here. Now, maybe sometimes you might want to return more than one value. And we'll talk about ways to sort of pack values together in a future lesson. But sometimes you also don't want to return any values. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just write a function here called print. And it's just going to write out a message here that says, hello, uh, functions, uh, since that's what we're studying here. And since I have uh, declared my function here, we know about the type here, and defined it, which we have the body here, then I can use this function anywhere in my program. Or I could use the same strategy of for declaring this function and then providing the definition later in the program. So just something to keep in mind. OK, so let's just go ahead and call print here. And I'll go ahead and compile. And oops, one missing um, uh, stream operator here. So let's go ahead and resave that, rerun. And this time, if I run it, you'll go ahead and see hello functions here. So there's no return as part of this function because my return type is void. And void just basically means don't return anything in this context. And there's also no parameters supplied here. So I don't have to pass in any arguments into this function here. Another way that you'll sometimes see this is if you don't want to pass in anything, you can be very explicit and just type in void here. And that will compile just the same here. So there we are. All right. So the last thing that I want to show you is just another uh, two things with functions. The first is going to be, again, just that it works with different types. So if I do a float here and float, then we can um, go ahead and try this with floating point values. So let me go ahead and I'm actually just going to leave this here and I'll do 1.2, 2.3. And I also need to define the function. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so you can see more of the uh, screen here uh, when I provide the actual function uh, definition for our floating point at here. So the return type needs to be a float. And each of our arguments, we need to be able to handle floats. And let's go ahead and compile this. And uh, whoops, let's see, it looks like we got a little uh, error here. 
So <laughs> what is it actually saying here? Is it saying call of overloaded add double double is ambiguous? Well, that's because remember this is a uh, double type if we don't explicitly say float and float with the suffix. So that's always a good practice to do with our numbers here. And then we'll go ahead and run our program. So we can see that this is called. But how are we sure? You know, you saw me make the little fix here. And if you want to debug, you know, a way to do this, since we don't know really how to use the debugger yet, is just say uh, add int int was called. And you can give yourself just a little bit of a debugging message here. And let's go ahead and do the same. And let's provide the full uh, function signature here. Remember that consists of the return type as well, uh, just to be uh, in practice and to, again, get familiar with that term, function signature. And let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that when this function is called, we are calling the floating point version of it. Now, if I go ahead and do something like, let's go ahead and try putting in five here. So I have one floating point number and one integer. It's again going to say ambiguous. It doesn't know if I should treat both of these as an integer or one or the other. So usually what you would do is either put an F after it. So 5.0 F to be explicit, or you can actually cast that value by putting in parentheses the data type and then go ahead and compile and run. And this will work just the same. So now it's treating this as a floating point value and calling the right function. Okay. So now you can see that we have basically a way to create two of the functions. We can name them the same thing, add, because that's essentially what we want to do. That's probably the best name for this function. And other languages like C, for example, you can't share the name here. C++ is able to figure out that these are different calls to add or different functions based off of the function signature. That is the fully qualified, the name, the number of the parameters that we have here and the return type makes up the function. Now, I just want to show you one more way that we can sort of um, specify the function declaration or declare functions, which you might occasionally see. This is a newer style where you can put the return type as a float here and just do auto uh, like this. Um, and that will also work here. So if you're coming to C++ from a more functional style um, programming language, auto deduces the sort of type for us. We have our name, the parameters, and then you put the return type at the end. Some folks might find this a little bit more intuitive um, as far as just reading this sort of left to right, um, if you're sort of uh, used to, to reading in that order, um, and then you know just specifying the return type with a float here. Most of the time you're going to see code like this, but newer modern style C++ allows you to define like this. So folks, that was an action-packed lesson on functions. We learned a little bit about writing our own function, the add function, that we can have functions that return exactly one value or no values by using void, the ability to name functions the same thing, and just a handy way that you can specify the declaration by using that more sort of functional style uh, C++. And recall that it is important that you have at least the declaration of the function before you use it, because C++ is reading your code top to bottom. But you can forward declare again and provide the function signature at the top as you're declaring that the function exists so the C++ compiler is aware of it. And we'll see why that's actually important when we start working with libraries and these sorts of things in a future lesson. For now, though, go ahead, try to write this function in a C++ program and try to write multiple versions of it using floats, integer types, longs that you've learned in a previous lesson. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll be talking more about functions in the next lessons. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one.